Hello everybody, welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna to be unboxing, building, and reviewing the new LEGO Ideas Jazz Quartet. I really enjoy the box art that they came up with for this set here. Although it is basic, it's just got the Jazz Quartet with the red glow behind it in the center of the box there. But I like the black background of the 18 plus style packaging. I also really like this logo that they came up with. It says Jazz Quartet, LEGO Ideas set number 42. And the red glow sort of matches up with the red stripe going along the bottom here. You can see it's LEGO set 21334 and has 1,606 pieces. You can actually build it as a team. So I guess that means there's probably four instruction manuals inside. So each character and each instrument is gonna have its own instruction manual. The top of the box here features the instruments. You got the piano, the trumpet, the bass, and also the drums and it has that same sort of red glow behind it there. Then we have that logo once again, and then a one of one image of one of the pieces there. There is a condensed image of the quartet on this side of the box, and then the bassist and the trumpeter on this side. The back of the box showcases how these can actually split apart into their own module, which I think is very cool. Then we have a lifestyle image in the bottom left corner right over here, and then a blueprint demonstrating the size over here. So it's 20 centimeters or seven and a half inches tall, 17 inches or 43 centimeters wide. The parts are divided among 11 different bags and then we have two large 16 by 16 plates. We actually get five instruction manuals and they have some beautiful art on their front cover, sort of like abstract, I really like that one. Each one features a different musician. And then the last one here features the entire quartet but this one is literally just an information book. It just gives us a little bit of insight on the set. So it says, setting the stage for your jazz quartet. Then it features each individual musician. Then you can meet the fan designer, just like all LEGO Idea sets. The LEGO players who was involved with creating this set. And then some information about LEGO Ideas. And then on the last page, how to assemble your jazz quartet as one solid unit. First up, we have the trumpeter. I actually really do like these characters. They came together just perfectly with all of the interesting parts that are used in interesting ways. Fabulous. Actually, they are bigger than I originally anticipated as well. I thought they were going to be like... Uh, the characters found in Mini World in Legoland, but they're actually a little bit bigger. They also have part of the stage in the bottom here. And you can see the stage is built uh, using a combination of studs and also tiles. We've got the stairs here as well. It has that black outline too, which looks pretty awesome. You can see the pins there. Uh, they're going to be used to pin all of them together. I love the part usage in the trumpeter. He's also sitting at this really unique angle, which is cool. You can see he's got a straight leg and then also a bent uh, leg there at the knee. Uh, his feet, really neat. They got the... Uh, Little tooth elements there and also a headlight brick. Then the shield tile on his hip there. And I just love the way they created the suspender. You can see they actually put some plates in the body there. Some one by two plates with these slides or the modified ones there. He's got a tie as well. And then his arms and hands are sort of grasping on to the trumpet. And you can see his mouth is getting ready to play the trumpet there and that's uh, done with a one by two jumper and some nice curved slopes and cheese wedges and stuff like that to uh, create the facial expression and hair and nose and ears and of course there are some points of articulation but right now he is in the perfect you know playing position I should say uh, but yeah definitely a nice uh, character there I love the way it came together the part usage was fabulous. Next up, we have the bassist. The instrument was awesome. Obviously, a lot better than the trumpet. Trumpet was fairly basic. I didn't go over that, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It's nothing crazy. Uh, but the bass is really cool. Like, it is fantastic. I love all the different angles and curves that are on this instrument here. Also, I like the chords as well. It's like the fabric, or sorry, the string pieces that clip in down here and run right along up to the top here of the base. 
And once again, he's at that sort of nice angle there. There's just all these different points of articulation. His body's sort of like perfectly posed at this perfect angle. He's grabbing onto the instrument. I will say that these chords are a little bit loose. They are exactly how the instruction manual shows them to be. They are just a little bit loose, but they do sit nicely between these modified plates right here with the clip. So that's good. Uh, some great part usage on our bassist. Uh, you can see the gaming controller is his bow tie, which I really like. His hair is cool. You know, it's got some of these rounded uh, arch pieces or like slopey style pieces there to create his hair. Uh, some of those tooth elements to create his ears and the cheese wedges to create his mouth and nose. And then there's all sorts of points of articulation there so that he can, you know, move his arms. But I would just have him in the position that the manual depicts him. I think that's best. Obviously, there are some differences between the characters. Uh, like, for example, the trumpeter had the shield tiles on his uh, pants there, whereas this guy here has some of the angle plates in black on his hip there. So they're all built differently, which is cool. Uh, definitely a lack of repetition in this set here. Not a whole lot of repetition between these guys, uh, which I really enjoy because I don't like repeating the same thing over and over again. Uh, so that is our first two characters right there. So the drummer is a lot bigger than the trumpeter and the bassist. A lot more parts went into creating this instrument. Obviously, it's a more technically advanced instrument. And he's also in the sitting down position, which I really like. Uh, his section of stage is quite large, you see. It's also a unique shape because the other ones will interlock in here. And they all come together perfectly. Uh, lots of great parts used to create uh, the drums are actually all held in place by clear elements. You can see there's like some antennas and some bars underneath in the middle of the... Uh, stands for all of the different things on the drums. So we've got the drums, we've got the large bass, and then we have some cymbals. And it's just awesome. All of these can be articulated because obviously, I mean, a drummer would have it set up best for him or her. And I think that's really neat. Uh, the cymbal down here has like a rubberized element. And we have the large bass right here. And I'll take this off so you can see some of the building components in there in just one moment. He's a little bit wider. You can see he's got a little bit of a belly on him there. Or either that or he's just hunched over. Uh, lots of great part usage there to make him at that sitting position. His shoes are multicolored. The other guys just have black shoes, I believe. But we've got a two-tone shoe there. So you can see the white tooth element. Then there's also some foot pegs down there with those sort of slope great pieces, which is pretty cool. on the bottom of the base there. Pretty awesome uh, building technique. I also like his hat and his big beard as well. And then another bow tie there as well. It's not a gaming controller bow tie, but rather those sort of one by one uh, rounded uh, tiles. Now, one thing that I found sort of weird was the way that he's holding his drumsticks. Apparently that is proper. That's what somebody was telling me in the live stream, but I don't know. I think they should be held more straightforward. Like, I think these clips should be the, I don't know, this, the, there should be a way that you can hold them forward. But somebody was saying that that's how jazz drummers hold their drumsticks sometimes. I just thought that was sort of weird. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I've never really watched a jazz band before, but I just thought that was sort of strange. All sorts of snot bricks and brackets went in there to create the awesome shape of the drums. And you can see these side panels actually just clipped into spot there. There's a number seven, I believe that has something to do with the designer on the uh, side of the drums. Uh, this set is all print piece. Uh, there's no stickers. Although with that said, I think that's the only print piece that there is. So they didn't really need to make stickers for the set, which is pretty cool. Definitely a nice touch when everything is print rather than uh, having stickers integrated into the set. Something else about the drum set, and I guess pretty much all of the instruments, is the fact that they can actually be removed from their bass there. 
Although I prefer it on here, you know, they all have their own little spot. They're all locked into position. I like that. Also, the uh, chair is a really neat chair or stool, I should say. Uh, some fabulous part usage down there to create uh, the stool. My favorite of all the instruments is actually the uh, piano. So here we have the piano. She's uh, playing the piano, sitting there on her piano chair. This thing is awesome. <laughs> it's a fabulous build. It is magnificent. Uh, we've got all the key print elements right there, and you can see the red felt uh, behind those keys, just built using uh, some red tiles. We also have that gold tile accent right there built into the piano. We've got a place to put the notes there. There is no cover for the keys, uh, so that is not there, but I mean, when you're working on the scale, it's hard to get every single detail. We've got the uh, top of the piano that's held open there by this bar element, and it does hinge open like that there to reveal all of the interior details. We've got all the grates there and also the gold gates, some more gold accents, and then all of these sort of connection elements down there to add some even more detail to the piano, which is really nice. You can see it's this unique shape using all sorts of different plate elements to create this awesome curved shape of a piano, which is just so authentic. <laughs> it's so awesome. I, I love this piano. It is held on by uh, four studs, so there's uh, two uh, hinge joints here, and that's where that will open up just like that there. You can see it's got three legs on the bottom there. Also a place for the foot pedals. And it's got some gold accents down there. And there's the foot pedals just underneath right there. You can see her feet line up with the foot pedals. And she is playing the piano. This arm doesn't really reach to the keys though. That one there does hit the keys. It's almost like she's turning and and sort of looking at the camera or the audience. Uh, she is a, a little bit heavier set, the penis there, and really cool the way this all came together there uh, with the nice yellow colors and these interesting curves to create her. And she's sitting on this lovely little stool there. And I love the part usage here uh, just for her hair element, very cool. There's some heart pieces in there and also the earrings as well, which is pretty amazing. I love the piano, definitely my favorite of the five instruments. And of course, all of these instruments can come together to create the jazz quartet. So let's uh, place them all together here. So it is fairly easy to do, and apparently they can be rearranged in different ways, but I just do it by the instructions. So the trumpeter will just go right there. Those Technic pins will just clip in. Now you can swap it, so you could put the bassist there and the trumpeter back here, but uh, I just do it by the instructions. But the way you would switch it is you just take these clips here and you can see there's an adapter there, an adapter there. So you can attach it to either uh, the bassist or the trumpeter, but we're just gonna put it right here just for the sake of this demonstration. And then you're gonna take that and align it with the pins just like that there. And then your final instrument will be your drums, which will sort of lock it all together. Sometimes getting Technic pins to line up on camera will be difficult, but there we go. Uh, fairly straightforward to get it all locked together there. Uh, and overall looks uh, really good, right? Yeah, I think in general, I mean, that looks pretty fantastic. So we've got our pianist, our trumpeter, our bassist, and also our drummer. Yeah, I think uh, it's a pretty neat set, that's for sure. So overall, I think it's a great set being offered at a fantastic price, 100 bucks for 1,606 pieces. I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it could be done much better. I mean, it, it's pretty neat, uh, an affordable price point too. I think uh, Lego fans that really enjoy part usage, uh, system building, and just interesting ways to build will really enjoy this set. And it might even be worth spending the $100 just to get the building experience out of it. I don't think it's going to be for everybody. I mean, you have to sort of be a fan of music, you know, maybe a fan of jazz music and like the piano and the bass and the drums. I can't say that it's going to be for everybody. I think it's a sort of a niche market for this one here, but I, I do love the build. It was a fantastic build. And once again, I think it's being offered at a great price, hundred bucks for 1,606 pieces. You really can't go wrong with that. I enjoyed the building experience, no repetition at all. Uh, for me, that is a huge, a huge win. And I think it was pretty good. Let me know what you think of the set by comments below and like, subscribe and stay tuned, farewell.